class, we are going to discover not only Africa, but further exciting new features of iOS 14 and the Swift UI framework. This advanced guide will help you to get familiar with how to build not only an iPhone app, but a full-fledged iPad and even a Mac desktop application. Objectives The main learning objectives of this tutorial are the following. First of all, we will learn how to set up a new iOS 14 app using exclusively the dark appearance. Then, how to create a launch screen using the settings, which is the new official approach to do. After that, we will learn how to parse and decode data from multiple JSON files with the Swift programming language. Next, we are going to learn how to create grid layouts in Swift UI. We will not only cover the basics of grids, but we will develop an advanced grid layout system and let users allow to switch from one list view to three different grid layouts on the new toolbar as well. Also, we will learn how to use SwiftUI's new map kit and create a basic, then a more complex map with multiple animating annotations at the same time. In addition to that, we are going to create a content-rich video list and learn how to play videos with the new Swift UI's audio video kit too. On top of that, we are going to cover two important Swift programming topics such as Swift extensions and Swift generics. What's more is at the end of the class, we will transfer the complete iPad application to our desktop app using Apple's Mac Catalyst. And finally, you will learn how to set up a new iMessage extension and create a cool sticker pack without writing a single line of code. By building this iCatchy application, you will get familiar, more exciting and new Swift UI features and much more. Setup Since this tutorial is quite long, therefore, without further ado, let's create then set up our new iOS project right now. First, download the resource files from this section. Then, place this compressed package wherever you want on your computer and unzip it by double-clicking on its icon. The provided main folder contains three additional folders inside it with the Swift logo marked on them. Moreover, there is a supplementary workbook file with the learning objectives as well. First, let's take a short look at the folders, shall we? You will find the finished project in the green folder. This completed project with the necessary source code may help you when you are stuck and need some quick help. The next folder is the red one. This contains all of the resource materials that you will need to build the Africa application. Finally, the blue one is created for you. We are going to create and save the new project into this folder. That's why it's empty for now. Now, let's open the workbook file and take a short look at the learning objectives. As you can notice, there is a very detailed list of the topics that we are going to cover in this tutorial. Xcode Alright, our very first step is to launch the Xcode 12 that you have already installed onto your computer. Then, let's create a new iOS 14 project as usual. To do that, let's click on the Create a new Xcode project option on the Welcome window. Then, make sure that the iOS tab menu is selected at the top and choose the app from the available application templates. Finally, click on the Next button to create the project. Configuration Now, we need to configure this new iOS 14 project. For the product name, enter Africa. For the team, if you already have an Apple developer account, login in here allows you to build your app on a real device. If you don't have an Apple developer account, you can skip this part and test your app in the iOS simulator on your Mac. Organization identifier. We usually enter our website address in reverse order. In my case, this is the com.swiftui masterclass. As you already may know, the bundle identifier is automatically combined from the project name and the organization identifier. Next, make sure that SwiftUI is selected for the interface. 
then the project's life circle must be Swift UI app. After that, make sure that Swift is the selected language as well. Finally, leave the core data and the include test options unselected. After all of these necessary settings, click on the next button and now we need to tell Xcode where we want to save the Africa project on the computer. Navigate to the desktop and choose the student's app folder as the destination. Just one more thing. If you are not familiar with using source control yet, then you can leave the git repository option unselected. Now click on the create button and Xcode 12 creates all files and folders for the project that we need to start developing the app. App icons. Super. We will start the project by adding the high quality pre-made resource files to it, shall we? Navigate to the resources folder and open it as I show you. In this folder there are a bunch of other folders too. Now open the app icon iOS folder. You will find all of the previously made professional icons in different sizes. First you need to select all files in this folder as I do. Now copy them to the clipboard. So far so good. Next we are going to add these icons to the project. Jump back to Xcode and click on the assets catalog in the project navigator panel. After that select the app icon in the middle panel. We can see an empty set of icons on the right part of the editor. As you can notice there are so many app icon sizes that we need to support. Now right click or control click on the app icon group as I show you. By doing this a new contextual menu will show up. Select the show in finder option from this menu and Xcode will bring us to the project icons folder in a new finder window. Next select the app icon set folder and open it. There is only a content JSON file in it. Now paste everything from the clipboard into this place. You will be asked to replace the existing file. Obviously we need to click on the replace button. Finally activate the Xcode and scroll down from the top smallest icons to the bottom largest icons. If you followed my instructions then you will see all icons with the Lion logo correctly placed into the assets folder. Just have a look at how many icons do we need to have to create a real iOS application. It's quite amazing, isn't it? Cover. Ok, it's time to add the rest of the images to the project. We will continue with the cover images. At the bottom of the assets catalog click on the big plus button and create a new folder. Give it the name cover. Now open the resources folder on the desktop then open the folder called cover inside it. Select all of the cover images and drag and drop them into their folder in the assets catalog as I show you. Great job! Cheetah, Buffalo, Elephant, Giraffe, Gorilla, Zebra and Lion. We got all of them. Gallery. Now we are going to add the animal photos to the project. At the bottom of the assets catalog click on the big plus button and create a new folder. Give it the name gallery. Now jump back to the resources folder and open the folder called gallery inside it. Here we need to select all of the photos and drag and drop them into its empty folder in the assets catalog. So far so good. Graphic. Now let's create another empty folder for the graphic files. Give it the name graphic. Now open the resources folder once again then the graphic folder inside it. After that select the compass image and the logo then drag and drop them into its folder similarly as we did with the other resources before. See? Awesome! Hero. After the logo and the compass graphics we are going to continue with the hero images of each African animals. Let's create a new empty folder then give it the name hero. 
Now jump back the resources folder, then open the hero folder inside it. Select these huge beautiful photos, then drag and drop them into its folder respectively. Now just take a short look at them. Splendid. Launch screen. We can create a new folder by right clicking on the empty area of the panel as well. Let's do it and rename it to launch screen. Now open the resources folder and the launch screen folder inside it. There is only one graphic file there with three different dimensions. 1x, then the retina 2x and 3x. Select all of them and drag and drop them into their empty folder. Nice. We are almost finished with the resources. Map. Now it's time to add the resource files for the maps annotations. Create a new empty folder, then rename it to Map as I do. After that, open the resources folder and the map folder inside it. Select the ready to use photos and drag and drop them into their folder. They look great. These square photos will be the custom annotations on the map. Video covers. The last folder that we are going to create in the assets catalog is for the cover images of the videos. To be consistent, we will give it the name video cover. After that, open the resources folder and the video cover folder inside it. Select these premade images, then drag and drop them into their folder as I do. Super! Videos. Now it's time to add the actual video files to the project. To do that, we need to add them to the project bundle directly and not to the assets catalog. First, select the main project on the navigator panel. Then, by right click on its name, select the new group option from the contextual menu as I do. Name it to Video. After that, jump back to the resources folder and open the video folder inside it. Here, select all of the 10 MP4 files and drag and drop them into the video folder on the project navigator. Now, we will be asked by Xcode for further information about these videos on a new pop-up window, so please pay attention to me. Before we click on the finish button, make sure that the destination, the create folder references and the add to target options are all selected. Awesome! All animal videos are successfully added to the Africa project. Now let's have some fun and play one of them, shall we? Select a video and hover over it in order to see the video player at the bottom of the window. See, we can even play a multimedia file directly in Xcode. It's such a powerful development tool. Jason. But hey, enough with the chit chat. We got some other important jobs to finish here. First, let's create another group like before. Give it the name Data. After that, jump back to the Resources folder for the last time in this lecture. Here, we need to find and open the Data folder. No surprise here. I am pretty sure that you know the drill by now. Select all of the JSON files and drag and drop them into its group folder at the Project Navigator as I show you. Before you click on the finish button, make sure that the destination, the create folder references and the add to target options are all selected as well. Now, to get an idea of how the biggest JSON file looks like, select the animals JSON file and scroll down for a bit at the editor pane. Yep, this is the longest data file in the whole Africa project with many different kinds of information about each animal. Accent color. Before we start coding and learn how to parse data with decoding a JSON file, we need to finish up with more initial settings. First, select the empty accent color set in the assets catalog folder. Then, show the inspector's panel if it's hidden like I do by clicking on its button on the toolbar. In this panel, change the appearances from none to any and dark. Now, select the empty Any Appearance color on the editor window. 
OK. After that, for its color content, select the sRGB color system. Next, for its input method, choose the 8-bit hexadecimal option from the drop-down menu. Then, enter the following value in the text field. Hashtag FFAF02. With that, we have just created a new orange color set that we are going to use as an accent color globally through this project. Now, select this color set and by pressing the Command plus C shortcut key, copy it to the clipboard. Then, select the empty dark color set slot and by pressing the Command plus V shortcut key, paste it. Nice job! Background color now select the launch screen folder because we are going to create a new color set for its background. Right click on the folder name and select the new color set option from the context menu. Give it the following name. Launch screen color and select both the any and the dark empty slots. After that we need to change the red, the green and the blue color sliders values from 1 to 0 as I show you. With this, we have created a pitch black color for the launch screen. Launch screen. Alright. We have made great progress so far and it's time to learn something new. Select the main project folder at the navigator. Then click on the info menu at the top bar as I do. In this window, there are new settings that are available for us from iOS 14. This is the launch screen settings that don't contain any values by default, but it's still quite important because with some additional values we can use it to create a new launch screen without touching the old storyboard technology. How cool is that? Let's learn how to do it right now. First, hover over the row of the launch screen property, then click on the plus button. This will add a new property to the launch screen settings. Now select the image name option and navigate the cursor to the empty cell at the value column in the same row as I show you. We need to click on this empty cell and add a new value to it. Enter. Launch screen image. After that let's add another property to the launch screen by clicking on the plus button. Now select the background color property from the drop down menu. Then enter the following value. Launch screen color. Yes, you are right. This is the color that we have just created recently in the assets catalog. And you have just learned a new way to create a launch screen. Hooray! No more storyboard. Dark mode. But you know what? There is one more thing that I keen to show you. Do you know that there is a handful official Apple iOS application that works only in dark mode? Do you know which ones? Well, let me tell you that one of them is the Stock app and another one is the Apple Watch app and the Measure app and the Compass app as well. But what about the most popular app? The Camera app. Yes, it works on the dark mode too. How fascinating is that? Now I am going to show you how to globally change the preferred appearance. First click on the plus button at the last row and add a new property to the settings. This time we need to find and select the appearance property from the drop down menu as I show you. For its value enter dark with a capital D letter. And voila! By adding this one property, we can use the dark mode even if we switch the app's appearance from dark to light. I hope that you like these two new features that you have just learned. Preparation Ok, we have just finished adding all resource files to the project and setting up the application as well. It's time to code a little bit and prepare the project for the upcoming lectures. But first, let's do some quick housekeeping. Select both the Africa app and the content view files. 
Then, by right-clicking on them, select the New Group from Selection option from the context menu as I do. Give it the name App. But Robert, why didn't we give it the name View Folder, you may ask. You know, in this folder we will collect only the main views. And we will collect all other reusable or smaller views in a dedicated view folder later on. You will see the reasoning of that because we will create a ton of views for this Africa project. Tab Views Without further ado, select the Content View file. Now change the content of the default placeholder text view from Hello World to Content. Nice! It's time to create all of the main views and save them into the app group. Let's create a new Swift UI file and give it the name Video List View. Once again, let's change the default placeholder content of the text view. Enter the following Video. Great, let's continue. Create another Swift UI file and give it the name Map View. Enter the following string for the text view. Map. Next. Create a new Swift UI file and give it the name Gallery View. Now enter the following string for the text view. Gallery. And let's create the last view. Name this Swift UI file to Main View. This main view will take quite an important role because it will be a tab view containing the other full screen views. Now let's prepare for it. First, replace the placeholder text view with this new tab view. Enter. Tab view. New comment, end of tab. Then add the first view to it. Content view. Tab item, image, system name, square, grid, 2x2, text, browse. After that, let's add the second view, video list view. Tab item, image. System name Play Rectangle Text Watch We can see on the preview how we are going to build up this tab navigation. Now add the third view to it Map View Tab Item Image System name Map Text Locations. And finally, let's add the gallery view to it. Gallery view. Tab item. Image. System name. Photo. Text. Gallery. We are almost done with this lecture. The only thing that we need to do now is to modify the Africa app file. Let's open it and replace the content view with the main view as I show you. Main view. Testing. And that's all for this lecture. Awesome job. All we need to do now is to build and run the project and test the app in the simulator. On the Xcode's new toolbar, click on the Build and Run button to launch the simulator. Since it's a fresh new launch, then it will take a while when the simulator boots up and starts the Africa app. For a short time period, we will able to see the launch screen that we made with the new official way. And here it goes. On a black background, there is a grey compass graphic. See? It's perfect. After the launch screen, we can see the new tab navigation. Now let's test it, shall we? Click on the tab items one by one and see their content in the middle of the screen. 
Everything works without any glitches as should do. What do you think about it? I think that it's a great start. We not only set up a new iOS 14 project in Xcode 12, but we have already added all the necessary resource materials to it as well. My ultimate goal with adding these resource folders to the project one by one is to get you familiar with them. So, when the time goes to use them, you will know what kind of asset file I refer to in the particular part of this project. Besides all of that, we learned how to create a launch screen and how to set the appearance globally for the app. Awesome job so far! Having said that, see you at the next class! Music